Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. This video we are covering CCNA semester 2, routing and switching essentials, and this is chapter 8, single area OSPF, section 8.2, configuring single area OSPF version 2. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to configure an OSPF router ID, define the different categories of routing protocols, Configure single area OSPF version 2 in a small routed IPv4 networks and explain how OSPF uses cost to determine the best path. So this is the topology that we're going to configure. So if you, I don't know, pause the video, have a look, I don't know, print screen this topology or whatever. So this is the topology we're going to configure if router 1. So the first thing they need to configure is the process ID. So you start router. OSPF, that's a routing protocol we're going to be using. And then it's the process ID. The process ID is a locally significant only. It doesn't really have to match with the neighbor. And you can use anything from 1 to 65,535. So you can't use 0. This is chosen by a network administrator. And it's a locally significant, which means it doesn't have to match on other OSPF routers. But just not to make our hard life, we always use the same number for all the routers. The, this is different to EIGRP because in EIGRP it has to match. We are using the same process ID simply for consistency. And then we do question mark. The output what you see here on the screen has been altered to display the commands that only will be used, uh, they're going to be used on this chapter. And it's only, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five commands. Eh, it's easier. Huh? Okay, so the first is the router ID. That's what I want to talk about first. First, this is router ID. This is like a name of, of the router on OSPF network or, or OSPF area. So router ID for this OSPF process. Then we can uh, start advertising the networks. Whatever network so we want to tell our neighbors, we start with a network command. If, for example, we have an interface that we don't want to send the uh, updates to, for example, there's a, a local interface or LAN interface, that we don't have any neighbors and we don't want to send updates to, we have to make that interface as passive. So no waste bandwidth. And security risk anyway, if you send an updates to none where there's no OSPF routers. And the auto cost, auto cost that calculates the OSPF interface cost according to the bandwidth. So we, by default, OSPF will uh, derive the cost from using the bandwidth and he has a default formula which is not very good anymore because we have faster interfaces than fast ethernet, which is gigabit ethernet. So if you have a gigabit ethernet and faster, then you definitely need this command because otherwise the OSPF router will just, or protocol will just look at it and say, okay, they are same, fast ethernet, gigabit ethernet, 10 gig ethernet, they're all the same. So the command first we configure is router ID. Now router ID, we can configure it uh, explicitly which is manually go and configure say okay well the router id is this 1.1.1.1 now if you already have configured a router id you have to uh, clear the process and it says the command reload that means turn off the router and turn it back on which is a bad thing or use clear ip ospf process so you want to clear only the ospf process so clear ip ospf process for this command to take an effect if it already has a different router id so, which we do down here, clear IP OSPF process. And then the router says, are you sure you want to reset all OSPF processes? And then it's giving you a default as no, don't do it. But we know what we're doing, so we say yes. That's the first method to get to the router ID. The second method is we can configure a loopback interface and it will pick the highest loopback IP address. Even that IP, if, it's not, if that loopback is not part of the OSPF process, it doesn't matter, it will pick it as a router ID. Now, router ID, you can see that it looks like an IP address, but it's not an IP address. It's just a number that looks like an IP address. So, router ID 1.1.1.1.1 is a number. You can use 255.255.255.255. No problem there. If you don't have a configured, uh, if you didn't configure this and you didn't configure any loopback interfaces, then the, it will pick the highest active configured IP address. So, it will find the highest active IP address and it will use that as router ID. Even if that interface is not part of the OSPF, doesn't matter, it will still pick that. 
So we have a explicitly configuring a loopback interface is the highest loopback interface. If that's not configured, then the highest active configured IP address will be picked. If that doesn't exist, then you will have an error saying we can't enable OSPF on this router because there's no uh, router ID. Then we have to start advertising. We have to start advertising what networks we want to send to our neighbors. Now, you have to be careful here. On this network, on these commands, it's only the networks that are working and active on your routing table. If they are in the routing table, then you can advertise them. You cannot advertise any networks that you don't have it on your routing table. There's two ways to do it. We have to use command network and then the network that we want to advertise. So for example, uh, if I just mark here a little bit, a network, that's a command. And then the network that we want to advertise, we can tell it like as a whole network, 172.16.1.0 or we can give an exact IP address of that interface on that network, 172.16.1.1. Sorry, when they're above. If we do it as a network, then we have to use the wildcard mask 000255, or that's, that's a wildcard mask is inverse of your subnet mask. So it, that's your subnet mask. And then what our area, we're gonna talk very soon about wildcard mask. Next slide. And then the area, what area does it belong? Area zero. This is preferred method. So you do the IP address of the interface of that network that you want to advertise plus four zeros. 0 .0 .0 .0. This is a quad zero. It defines a single interface right, of that network. And then the area that it belongs to. So the command is network, network address, and the wildcard mask. The wildcard mask can be configured as the inverse of subnet mask. So if you say 255, 255, 255, 255, put that on the top, subtract the subnet mask, and you will get the wildcard mask. So minus 255, 255, 255 .240, that's our network, subnet mask, and now that's the wildcard mask is 0, 0, 0, 050. Again, like we said, uh, interfaces, they are not gonna you're not gonna create neighbors for example their LAN interfaces you shouldn't be sending updates to so by default OSPF messages are forwarded out of all OSPF enabled interfaces however these messages really only need to be sent on out in interfaces connecting to other OSPF enabled routers sending out unneeded messages on a LAN affects the network in three ways inefficient use of bandwidth inefficient use of resources and increased security risk. The passive interface feature helps limiting the scope of routing updates advertisement. This is how we configure passive interface. So you go to the OSPF configuration mode, router OSPF 10, and then passive hyphen interface gigabit zero zero, gigabit ethernet zero forward slash zero. That's how you can create a passive interface, which you don't want to send updates out of that LAN interface. The recommendation would be to make it default, passive hyphen interface default. That means that all the interfaces are passive and you only enable it on the interfaces that you do want to send updates. Instead of, for example, I don't know, imagine that you've got, I don't know, 10 LAN interfaces, sub interfaces or whatever, or you have a, a, a loopback interfaces. You don't want to go to each interface and say passive interface loopback one, passive interface loopback two, passive interface loopback three. You might as well say passive interface default and then say no passive interface serial zero 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 no passive interface or passive hyphen interface serial zero zero one okay that would be easier so by default the OSPF uses a default reference bandwidth to derive the cost and this is a 10 to the power of 8 10 to the power of 8 is like the same as saying 100 million now up to fast ethernet if you if you look at the fast ethernet in bits per second it's 100 million bits per second so 100 million divided by 100 million or 10 to the power of 8 divided by 100 million it's one okay that's great but once we get the gigabit ethernet which is 1 billion now and 100 million divided by 1 billion we can't go less than zero so it's just equals to one anyway and then 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 10 gigabit ethernet which is 100 million divided by 10 billion it's one again uh, as far as the OSPF is concerned all these three interfaces three types of interfaces is same they are the same the cost is one so for this reason 
if you have a router that has a faster links than the fast ethernet then you need to change it so auto cost reference bandwidth so adjusting reference bandwidth use the command auto cost reference bandwidth M must be configured on every router in the OSP of domain notice the value is expressed in megabits per second so gigabit ethernet auto cost reference bandwidth 1000 if you have a 10 gigabit ethernet you say auto cost reference bandwidth 10,000 Now, OSPF accumulates the cost from the source to destination. Cost of the OSPF route is accumulated value from one router to the destination network. So, for example, um, very quickly here, forgive me about this. Uh, say we have three routers here. And now, this link here, for example, uh, say it's 64 kilobits per second, or 64 the cost. And that's the bandwidth, 10, 10 to the power of 8 divided by bandwidth, and that's the number they come up. And this cost is one, for example, that's a fast ethernet link. And that's maybe a serial link. The OSPF from the source to the destination is accumulated. So it adds this and one. So 64 plus one is 65. It's different to, to EIGRP. EIGRP just looks at the lowest link. It finds whatever is the lowest link on the path. OSPF doesn't look at the lowest link. It adds, it keeps adding. So for example, one, if I have another connection here, for example, that's 10 maybe. Um, then it's going to add that so it's going to be 75. on cisco routers the default bandwidth on most serial interfaces is set to 1540 or 1.544 megabits per second now you need to go and adjust that and to get the correct cost you need to put the the bandwidth correct the bandwidth um they can set the cost yourself so you don't need to worry about the bandwidth or change the bandwidth value you just say you you actually write the cost ip ospf cost 1500 uh, sorry 15625 if we want to verify the protocol setting we do show ip protocols and we see that we have running ospf uh, version ospf process id 10 and our router id is 1111 and we advertise in the networks these are the three networks that we advertise in and we can see that we have two neighbors here. To verify that the routers has formed the adjacency with its neighboring routers, this is the command to run. Now, as soon as you want to check the OSPF, whether you're working, you see that you have neighbors, this is the command. Show IP OSPF neighbor. This is going to tell you first the list of the neighbors in the order they will learn. So we have, you can see that we see a router ID of the neighbor. The priority what is the neighbor's priority and this is again if you remember from first section is used for dr and bdr election the priority zero means that no dr or bdr election then the state the state of the ospf enabled interface the full state means that other uh, the router and its neighbors have identical ospf link state database this should be always full uh, on the multi-axis you could have a two-way but they shouldn't be st stuck on any other state. The amount of time remains before declaring the neighbor down, so we can see the dead time. So if we hello link, and this is point to point, yeah? So we have every 10 seconds, then the dead time is four times hello. This is the neighbor's address, neighbor's, uh, the actual IP address of the neighbor. And this is a local interface to reach that neighbor. To verify OSPF process information, show IP OSPF. And this is information that we see here again, OSPF, what process ID is, what is the router ID, what area do this router belongs to, and is there an algorithm, or is there authentication on this uh, area. To verify OSPF interface settings, show IP OSPF interface brief. This is gonna show us what interfaces are part of, uh, enabled for OSPF. And we can see we have three interfaces here and they're all in area zero. Then quickly we can see the, the IP address and the cost, more important about is the cost. And we have changed the default auto cost reference bandwidth here. So we are differentiating between gigabit ethernet and fast ethernet. Thank you very much for watching this section 8.2, configuring single area OSPF version two. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Next video, 8.3, configure single area OSPF version 3. Bye-bye.